Hello everybody and welcome back to the next episode of BTA Bite Size. Today we're going to be covering mortars and grenade launchers because we're still in the artillery bracket. Uh, grenade launchers, again, are one of them little weird ones where even they are in the support slot category but they are kind of still technical, uh, technically classed as an artillery piece. So even though they're not um, the you know the significant weight and size of the regular artillery, I feel that they kind of need to be included in the same bracket, and they operate uh, in an extremely similar way to the mortars and artillery anyway. So that's why they're going to be in this video. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Okay, so um, as it sits, the mortar again is very similar to the rest of the artillery. It obviously supports uh, goes in the uh, ballistic slot. Um, it comes in four flavors, the one, two, the four, and the eight, and each number of those corresponds to how many shells it fires at a time. So obviously, mortar one fires one, mortar eight fires eight, etc., etc. Uh, so for example, the mortar eight actually fires eight shells. Each shell does eight damage, so you've got a grand total of a base 64 damage. That's obviously direct hit. Um, that will change varying depending on the ammo, which we'll get into in a little bit. Uh, like the regular artillery, these have a high heart, high arc and don't really focus mechs individually as such. So again, you don't need line of sight. You can fire over mountains as long as you've got an idea of where the mechs are. Obviously, something sensor locked or even if you've got like um, a mech ping sort of on your, on your sensor radar so you have an idea of where they are, then you just kind of drop it in the area the same as the uh, artillery. Um, they do have a scatter variance of between 5 and 15 meters, so again, not super accurate. Um, and obviously, the same as regular artillery, and because of AOE damage, they don't um, fire in a melee situation. Uh, so how the area of effect uh, damage works is pretty much the same as regular artillery. I did do a much, much more in-depth video of this in the artillery video uh, with all the different ammo types on there. So if you are more interested in that, please, by all means, go and see that one. Um, but to try and put it simply, each ammo type has a base direct damage. Uh, in this case, um, it's eight damage per shell. Um, again, it, that, that will vary depending on the ammo. Uh, but trying to uh, put it simply, uh, it also has an AOE radius. That means the uh, distance around the shell impact that will actually cause damage to everything that's in it. Uh, usually between 40 to 60 meters um, in the case of the mortars. Uh, and the damage stroke status effects are applied to all of the mechs, regardless of whether they are friendly or enemies in that particular bubble. Um, so bear in mind that these stack as well. So if the main target um, is, say for argument's sake, we'll say mech A is your target, he will take the direct, the direct damage of 64. Plus, he will also take the AOE damage of whatever the ammo type happens to have, plus the status effects that goes on it. So they can be quite nasty if you're using the right ammo in the right situations. Um, the various ammo types alter the base, uh, uh, the base damage uh, and the AOE damage, um, as well as adding buffs or debuffs. So some of these can actually be used for your own benefit. Um, as opposed to just just basically doing damage. Um, and again, I will reiterate, AOE damage does not differentiate between you and the enemy. So if you've got any mechs nearby within that bubble, they are going to take the damage and the buffs and debuffs, etc. Uh, as a whole, the damage of the systems isn't fantastic. Uh, a base eight damage per shell isn't great, especially, you know, obviously when you've got more one and that's like eight damage, it's not really very much. Um, but again, it's main, it doesn't, it doesn't cause as much wide range destruction as like the bigger, heavier artillery systems do. But um, very similar to the uh, standard auto cannons, its uh, abilities lie in the various different types of ammo that it can bring to the field. And it's, again, it's one of them double-edged swords. It's a case of you do have a lot of um, different functionality and a different uh, lot of things that you can do. But also, it either requires you carry a lot of, you waste a lot of tonnage carrying a lot of different ammunition types, or you basically run the risk of the ammo that you have is not the ammo that you need for the situation. So that's a little bit of a trade-off you have to do there. Um, but with that said, um, we're just going to have a quick run through the ammo. I'm not going to go super in-depth with it, but I'll just give you an idea of um, how it all works and sort of what sort of use cases you have for each one. 
Right, first off is the uh, standard ammo. Nothing really special to say about it. It does the standard eight direct damage and it does four AOE damage. So this basically means in the case of the mortar eight, you will do 64 uh, damage to the main target and then he'll have another four damage added on top of that for the AOE effect as well, giving you a total of 68. That's basically how it works. Anything else in the bubble will just take four damage. Okay, so starting off with the fun stuff now, we have the Acid Ammo. Now, this has an AoE of uh, 40 meters um, and doesn't do a massive amount of damage. It does the 8 standard damage, but it only does 2 AoE. Um, so again, in the case of the Mortar 8, it'll be the 64 plus 2. Uh, where the Acid Ammo comes into its own, though, is it does a X adds a 20% basically buff to you. Uh, but um, a debuff to the enemy's armor so you will not only do uh, the it not only does 50 percent more damage to the armor um it will only if you uh, if you hit armor it has a weakness against structure as all acid based weapons do uh, so it will do more damage to the armor but less damage to the structure however you will do 20 percent more supplement damage after the fact so say for example you hit a mech with this particular shell um, and you do your damage then another mech with say an ac20 follows up with that he will not only do his base 100 damage he will also do the extra 20 percent on top of that uh, subsequently any other uh, mechs that shoot and any other weapon systems so he will do 120 damage to it from there so super super useful in that respect especially when you're dealing with targets with a massive amount of armor uh, and not a lot of structure things like uh, turrets and certain vehicles um, spring to mind for that uh, but yeah the effects also don't stack so don't expect to hit it twice um, in the same go with acid and it will do 40 percent 20 percent is the base that is all it'll take um, so the acid ammo and a quick side note on that um, the acid ammo does not stack but multiple different types of ammos can be stacked on the same mech so for example you can hit the mech with acid and you can hit it with inferno for example and it will take both effects it's just you can't stack them one or you know you can't stack two lots of one on on the same mech essentially um but yeah um super useful in that case it only lasts two turns uh that's you know a very short period of time but to be fair uh you want to be making sure that whichever mech has the acid weapons is the one that fires first if you can and then have all of your other team follow up and you could quite easily decimate um whoever it is that you're shooting at um quite quickly um so yeah qu uh, quite useful even though the damage isn't great but it's more about the damage it's setting it up for the rest of your team uh, with this one Okay, so moving on to Airburst. Um, this one has an AoE of 60, um, and it operates a little bit differently uh, because it's actually, as the name implies, it actually explodes in the air. The uh, direct damage drops from 8 to 4, but you do get um, an extra sort of like 4 bomblets. So think of it kind of like an LBX cluster shot. So each shell will split into bomblets um, after 210 meters. Um, so you get less damage, but you get more shells um, over a sort of, uh, you know, over the area. So uh, that's kind of how this works. Um, it's very good. Um, you know, it'd be good for sort of critical hits and stuff. Um, but uh, try not to use it against armor because it's, you know, it's 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 like sandblasting really it's gonna you know it's gonna take a lot it's good it would be good if you've got a lot of uh, like a cluster of um low health mechs um you know ones with a lot of components open that are ready to fall off uh you can do like quite a massive amount of damage to this um but early on when you've got the mechs like with their full armor and stuff um the damage on this is a little bit too spread out um, to cause any significant sort of, you know, sort of pinpoint damage. If they're all clustered together in a group, um, then yeah, you know, you can do a decent amount of damage to all of them. Um, but yeah, you, you kind of, this would, I personally would feel would more come into its own uh, when you've got mechs that sort of like, you know, starting it, you know, they've got lots of components that are open and you just want to take arms and legs and stuff off that, you know, this would be better suited for that. And next up, we have the face cam ammo. Uh, area of effect is 60 meters. Uh, again, these there's <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of numbers and figures. Um, don't sort of panic when it comes to these. Um, you basically don't get a lot of uh, main actual direct damage. This is essentially what it does is it creates a minefield. 
Uh, so to try and put this briefly, how this works is you get one mine per shell uh, per tube. Um, so with a face cam, you get four shells per tube. So for example, you have a mortar four. This means you have four shells per tube and four tubes. So that's four lots of four, which gives you 16. That's how many mines you get. Uh, all the mines damage numbers are in the tooltip. I won't go into super, uh, you know, super in depth there. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's all basically listed there for you. Like each mine has its own specific damage bracket that it does. Um, so again, as you can see, it's all lift, listed there. It's got an 80% trigger chance, five mine direct mine damage, etc. Um, one side note as well. Don't forget though, if a mine does direct damage to a mech structure, i.e. if a light mech is sprinting across your minefield and his leg is open, just exposed, like has no armor left on it, and a mine explodes and does direct damage to his leg, he will stop that it will stop that mech dead in its tracks, regardless of what it's doing. Uh, so that's something handy if you want to stop things from running around um, a lot. Um, uh, and yeah, uh, also mines can't trigger other mines, uh, so don't expect like one mine to go off and the whole field to, to go off like that. So yeah. Uh, bear that one in mind. Anyway, moving on. And next up, we have the flare shells. Uh, does what it says on the tin, really. Um, it doesn't really do any damage apart from like one, I think. Um, it, it yeah, it's it's not that the, it's it's not there for damage. What it does is it basically gives you a plus one to your accuracy. That's pretty much about it. However, as with all of these weapon systems, it doesn't discriminate. So if your mechs are in there, it will give the enemy a plus one accuracy on you. It illuminates and adds the plus one accuracy or plus one like chance to hit to all of the mechs in that bubble. Uh, that bubble being uh, 60 meters. So and it does last a fair amount of time. I think it's like six or seven turns. How the turns or how long it lasts uh, is a little bit complicated. I have tried getting clarification on it. Um, there's a lot of math involved and things, and I'm not good at math. So take it with a grain of salt, but around sort of between five and seven turns-ish uh, it will last for. So make sure that none of your mechs are anywhere near it. But yeah, basically gives you a plus one accuracy. Okay, so next up we have the guided ammo. Uh, this one has an AOE of 50 meters. Uh, it does reduce your accurate, you reduce your damage by one, so you will only uh, do seven main and three, AO, uh, three AOE. However, it does make it uh, a bit more accurate with a plus one to accuracy. So, personally, I would probably use this over the standard ammo. Uh, purely because that extra accuracy is going to help and the extra accuracy will make up with the slight deficiency in the damage because more stuff's likely to hit. Um, so yeah, not a great deal to say about this one apart from it just gives you an accuracy buff. Um, and personally, I would use this over the standard if you if you can, if you've got it. And here we have next one is the good old Inferno. In this case, sort of tickle it with fire. Uh, it has an AOE damage of 90. Um, its direct damage is only 6 per shell, but it does give 2 heat. And the AOE damage being 2 damage with 2 heat. Um, again, always a good fun one, the old Inferno. It's, uh, it's not, again, about doing the direct damage. It's about overheating your enemy. Uh, and obviously um, setting fire to anything that's surrounding it. Uh, each shell will start also start a terrain fire, which usually lasts around two turns uh, and does a moderate amount of damage, and you get a 10% um, bonus heat damage to any mech that's already on his red line and overheating. Um, again, this is more about um, area denial and creating a situation where the enemy mechs can't fire back at you as much because they're too hot. Um, so the, again, not more of a direct damage weapon, one of the more useful, um, sort of ammo types, but again, be very, very careful that you don't have any of your mechs around, uh, or anywhere near where the fire, cause the fire will spread, uh, to a certain degree. And yeah, you want to be, uh, very careful because obviously that will do damage to you and overheat you as well. So make sure you're miles away from it. But again, hopefully if you're using artillery, you won't, but if you're like me and you've got mechs that are punching everything in sight, then maybe not so much. Okay. So next up we have the smoke, uh, need to disengage and the enemy binoculars are too good. Then smoke is here for you. Um, 
150 meter AOE and it's basically used to blind the enemy from shooting back at you. Um, it gives um, basically a 75% less sight range, minus one to accuracy and 30% less sensor range. Uh, it does naff all damage, but it does last a very long time. Again, also bear in mind things work two ways. So if you have mechs in the cloud and you're trying to shoot out, it will also affect your accuracy and also affect your sensors as well. Uh, basically, drop the smoke on the enemy. What you want to do is drop the smoke on the enemy squad um, and while you're trying to run away, essentially, uh, and disengage and come back from a different area. Uh, if you're trying to shoot into the cloud, it will obviously affect your accuracy as well. So I wouldn't advise you drop it on your team. Um, you're probably better off dropping it on their team if you can. Um, but if you want something to just hide in and you desperately need cover and you haven't got any, obviously dropping it on your team is an option. You will, I believe, get a very, very minor amount of damage just because that's how the game uh, code works. Um, and stuff has to do sort of a sort of point of damage or whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, super useful for disengaging. But yeah, you're not going to do any damage, but it is going to affect you as well. Again, friendly fire isn't. Just be just be wary of it, but it will be very useful for you if you want to disengage. Okay, and last but not least, we have the suppressant. Um, this one has an AOE again of 150 meters and does eight damage per shell. Uh, but only one AOE damage. Its main purpose is to make mechs toasty. What this does is it suppresses the enemy mechs, oh, oh mechs in general, um, cooling system, i.e., you know, obviously they use vents and things, and it blocks it, essentially, like, clogs them all up and all that sort of stuff, uh, and they generate more heat than usual. This makes it so they are going to make it, that you know, it's going to be harder for them to keep cool. They're going to be able to fire less at you, and your uh, sort of thing you want to use if you know mechs are sort of getting close to their red line and not sh uh, you know not slowing down with their shooting, uh, you can drop one of these on their head and you know if you want to make them overheat and shut down or hopefully even make some ammo go bang. Um, but yeah, that's what this purpose is for. Again, it's um, something that is uh, would be well used in conjunction with Inferno. So you know you would uh, drop. The uh, try and drop the suppressant on them first if you can, um, and or in the, at least in the same turn as the inferno. So basically, you you knacker their heat systems first, and then you drop an inferno shell on top of their head, um, so their damage goes way up, and then they can't get rid of it, and you you know they shut down. It's easier for you to shoot at, etc., etc. So uh, super useful in certain situations. Again, um, only really in a very hot biome maps. And uh, if you've got sort of like uh, Inferno ammo to use as well, or you know, or, you know, obviously you're dealing with enemies that are constantly overheating themselves um, in that regard. So super useful, but only in certain situations. Okay, so an overall impression of the system as a whole. Um, the mortars uh, do provide a, a good uh, use of a good amount of versatility. Um, however, they do have a few inherent issues. Uh, firstly, the damage is distinctly mediocre. It's not. It's not straight up bad, but it's not. It's not good either. It's you know. It's just meh. Um, the other uh, one of the other big issues it has is uh, is essentially the ammo. Um, and you run into the similar situation that you do with the auto cannons. Uh, there is such a varied amount of ammunition that will suit a, such a varied amount of situations. You uh, basically end up in the situation where the ammo that you have is never the ammo that you need. Uh, and it is going to be nigh on impossible, especially as you get, uh, you know, when you get a uh, unless you get like the you know the really heavy mechs to use them on uh, to carry at least one ton of every type of ammo uh, then you've got to remember you've got to continue to keep switching backwards and forwards um, but more than likely where you're going to be using these is probably late early game and sort of your mid uh, you know early mid mid game um, where you are you know you've got a few sort of um, of the heavier medium mechs and the sort of uh, the sort of lighter um, heavy mechs um, that you can carry a varied amount of ammo on um, possibly not all of it uh, but you are going to um, run into issues with the damage as well 
And honestly, by the time you get up to the mechs that are able to support having all of the different ammo types on, you're basically in the region where you can start looking at things like using the uh, heavier artillery pieces instead. Uh, so it kind of makes the mortars a little bit redundant. So they're an okay weapon system. I wouldn't say they're straight up bad, but they wouldn't be if I had to use uh, use a, um, a uh, an artillery based system. Not one I would choose. I think even the thumper is probably a little bit more useful uh, than this. But saying that again, stuff like having the suppressant uh, combined with the inferno ammo would be very good uh obviously the face cam ammo is good um and the air burst is good can be good in certain situations and the acid again so there's a lot of versatility and a lot of useful but it's just kind of backed up by sort of medium like meh damage um and again given the amount of weight um that some of these take up in the space um eight tons and five inventory slots for the for the biggest one uh again they don't use a massive amount of room but it's, you know, possibly one that you could use something a little bit better and a little bit more accurate, maybe. All depends on your setup and, you know, obviously, again, your mileage may vary. Uh, I, you know, I make no bones of the fact that I'm not a massive fan of artillery. I am not a big person that's into um, indirect fire and low accuracy weapons. I like to hit what I shoot at or punch it in the face. That's that's kind of my play style. But I appreciate the artillery pieces have their place. I'm just not that convinced that the mortars is right up there with the rest of them is all. Okie dokie. So that all being done with the mortars, we're going to move on to the grenade launcher now. Um, now, this is probably going to be a short clip because there isn't a massive amount to go through on this. Uh, so we, this is essentially the Mortar's little brother. It does fit in the support slot and you will not find it in the support slot section. Uh, there isn't in here. It's actually you have to go to the artillery section and then it's in there. The same with the ammo. The ammo is in the artillery section. It's not in the support slot section in case you can't find it. Um, I That is obviously I'm in the uh, skirmish mech bay. Uh, as far as I know, it operates exactly the same as the rest of the game. So, um, yeah, so that's where to find it. So the mech grenade launcher uh, fits in a support slot, takes up three um, tons and takes up two slots. Uh, it has pretty much the same sort of range as the regular mortars. I know I didn't really cover the range on the uh, on the mortars, but you've kind of got the idea by now that, you know, artillery pieces have long range. That's kind of, that kind of their job. Um it will only it pretty much does essentially what the mortars can do for the most part uh, but it only does fire one shell at a time which does limit it a little bit but it does a base direct damage of five for a direct hit which is okay and again it's only three less than the um than the mortar shell base damage um but obviously you are only doing that one five however where it shines is its ammo types i'm not going to split it down into individual sections because you know uh it, essentially a lot of it works the same as the mortar um where the good one is it, one of the best ones is this one it's the high explosive damage uh it has 120 meter aoe and it deals 35 damage and 10 stability damage to all of it in that bubble so again, it does stack. So whatever target you hit will take the five damage plus the 35, which gives you 40 and then gives you 10 damage. But that 35 damage will apply to everything. So if you've got a group of enemy mechs that are in a bubble, you know, that's 35 damage you're doing to each one. Considering you're only firing one shell, that's pretty damn good. Uh, moving on from that, the Inferno ammo again works exactly the same as all the rest of the Inferno. Uh, has a 90 meter AOE, does 20 AOE damage with a 10 AOE heat uh, and 5 stability. Again, its main job is to overheat things and set things on fire. It's not really there to do a massive amount of damage, um, but it is a good little fire starter for what it is. And it's a not for a basically damage wise and functionality wise, it's not far short of a Mortar 4. Uh, which actually is um, a lot, and it's a lot lighter uh, and takes up a lot less space than a mortar four. Uh, moving on to the last one, there is the smoke again. Operates pretty much the same as what we've already covered with the mortar. Uh, AOE of a hundred meters does exactly the same as the mortar equivalent. Um, just to, you know, with all the debuffs and the buffs, again, obviously applies to you as well as them. Um, my overall impression of the system as a whole, uh, it is solid uh, with enough versatility to be useful without having the too, too many different ammo types. Uh, a nice balance of weight um, and space for, the, for it. 
uh, and it you know be super useful to have early on but it will probably be better um sort of early uh, sort of late early game again mid game um when you need the little extra help again it's kind of overshadowed a little bit by the bigger artillery pieces you could mount but if you are running a lighter uh, lighter um unit uh then obviously you know something like this is going to be super useful for you so we uh come to my final thoughts on the sort of genet on the system as a whole and this is covering obviously both uh my opinion on these is pretty much the same as it is for all artillery again i am not a massive fan of indirect and inaccurate weapon systems uh, as a rule, my personal play style is very much uh, up close and personal, followed up by pinpoint. Um, it doesn't work well, and that play style doesn't work well with AOE-based um, weapons. However, in terms of useness, I would personally, I would rate the grenade launcher above the mortars. It's just a little bit, it just gives you the nice balance of versatility without having so many different ammo types that it makes it impossible to be able to cope with any situation with them. Um... And if I would have to, I would use thumpers over mortars, as personally I feel they do a better job. Both of these systems are in the, uh, I would rate as the okay category. Um, they're solid enough, but they don't scream, use me, I'm amazing, um, like some of the others. So that's pretty much about it covered for uh, grenades and mortars. Uh, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Obviously, I do put a lot of work into these, so um, any help for the channel would be fantastic. Um, again, don't forget to come and uh, follow me on Twitch. I um, My stream schedule is still a bit wonky at the moment, um, but I am at least going to try and keep um, streaming Battletech on a Monday at least, um, and we'll go from there. So again, thank you very much for watching, guys. Stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.